Oh uh, yeah, and I I will start with the with the with that the beginning of the trade war, shall we say? Yeah. Um, you saw like why experience like one company in particular. They were a smaller firm, probably about fifty employees, manufacturing company. You know, they they source a lot of materials from China. You know, you have the Trump tariffs come in. Suddenly, it gets more expensive to import key components sure. from China to the U.S. And mm-hmm. up until that point, you know, they 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 made medical devices. So as far as they're concerned, they're doing the Lord's work. Right, like you know, why would anyone or anything be interfere with the ability to like manufacture these products? But again, you know, when this policy has been developed, their voice was not in that room. And right. one thing I've learned is that policymakers love to hear from businesses because again, you're the you're the ear, eyes and ears on the ground. You're the practitioners. You're the ones who would be dealing with the effects, you know, or benefits of what the policies are being drafted. And so. I think it, it taught them that they had to be more proactive to deliver that message to Washington about what impact those tariffs were having on a, on a small business like theirs, right? So that's one example. Another one, if you know, if, if you and your your listeners are familiar with, is the case of Facebook and Libra. And if you remember, oh, yeah. like Facebook at one point wanted to launch a cryptocurrency called Libra, but if you remember, Facebook launched it and then tried to engage with Washington to explain what Libra was. And by then it was too late because again, if you're on Facebook, given what we, you know, all the bad publicity they've had from like the, the election and misinformation, et cetera, you already know you're on shaky ground. And so the key thing to do is, okay, and, and, and Libra might have been a perfectly great idea that might have transformed financial services, but because they didn't take the time to educate key policymakers and key lawmakers and key regulatory figures in DC before announcing that initiative, it crashed and burned. Because once once people have an opinion formed, you co- it's hard to like re- change change that around. And so I always right. encourage my clients and other businesses to take the time to identify who are the key stakeholders within the policy policy world. And by that, I don't just mean, you know, some people within the White House or people within regulators. I mean, Capitol Hill also is a, is a key stakeholder audience that the businesses should always talk to and have relationship with, but also the media. Because the media also influences what these people think about certain companies, certain policies, etc. And then within DC, especially as you know, you know, and this is not news to anyone who hears this. You have a lot of influential think tanks as well. You have the Bro- Bro- the Brookings of the world, the Catos, right. AEIs, etc., who who have also staffed sometimes with former, you know, staffers, former initial officials who you know they do research, they 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 write op eds. They give speeches. They 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 hold events where they invite government officials and lawmakers to to participate. So they're also very influential in like shaping messaging, shaping policy, and so engage engage with that what I call the DC ecosystem, or to make it broader to anyone who's not based in the United States, engaging with your with your public policy ecosystem in in countries that you have business interests or in so sort of, in sort of like like investments is very important.